Good evening and welcome to 11.11 Let the Journey Begin. I hope that you are all well, that you had a very good Sunday, that you feel relaxed and in tune with yourself and as agreed we have uh, come to an end with our um, seven day sequence of meditations and today we have a uh, question mark and what is that what does she mean about meditation question mark well it's about more of a talk and for us to have a chance to to interact more with each other and um, and picking up on on one of, of the the five elements and today uh, it came quite strong the element air uh, with wind and as uh, I see the winds announcing uh, autumn um, the, the autumn winds announcing that we are going to change season and we're not going to have these beautiful temperatures anymore for some months and we are to welcome now um, winter and, 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 and the cold which is uh, sadly uh, very soon <laughs> but be as it may so we will talk about element air that is always comes as a surprise uh, for 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 the high priest so high priestesses in the sacred Indian tradition usually when we offer um, a dispatcho which is a monthly ceremony of thanksgiving we are uh, we wait um, to understand what is the element that uh, the energy comes. Uh, what what's the energy that comes to to us for, for what is the healing? What is the the message? Uh, what is that uh, the priest is to convey? And um, I left the eighth. Um, Eighth session, which is today exactly with a question mark, uh, so we could either ground to Pachamama or Mother Earth or let go of emotions and feelings with the element of water or to hear messages or, or to put our creativity or also our thought towards taking decisions with element air or if in another hand it was about transmuting um, transmuting energies with, with the element fire. Um, so, air it is, air is going to be. So, as usual, we are going to, we're not going to go to meditate, but we're going to talk and we're going to talk and we're going to uh, work with, with energy and for that we go into call directions in order to open space. Alright, so I would, I have um, we have Lloyd here with us. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so, <laughs> say hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so you will be assisting us with a with a camera. So maybe today you will have a chance of actually seeing how we call directions. So, uh, without further ado, let's uh, pick up the gear. Uh, those of you that have the, um, we all have gear. We have our hearts and we are embracing these sessions, all right? Um, the, those of you that follow the sacred Indian tradition, if you have your mesa, uh, it's okay, you can, and, and uh, if you are a Paco or a Papa Misayok, you know, remember, hold your mesa with your left, uh, on your left, all the other um, uh, masters, altos, yaktas, Suyus and Kura Kulaks, if you are watching this session, thank you so much for blessing us and to joining uh, 11 11. Let the journey begin. So, um, let's start by calling directions. And, okay, let's start by doing this. Shoes on. And remember, I start by putting a chumpi, which will protect my energies um, from whatever unorganized energy that might come up, and it will also protect you from whatever energy that 
I might have built up on me and uh, not intentionally passed on to you. And my Bayuru beads, the feminine beads and the masculine beads. As earlier explained, to balance feminine and masculine within. I just had some incense burning. Space had been cleared before. I'll wear my obsidian shakana, the Indian cross. And you can see it um, as a pendulum, <laughs> all right? It's a little bit harder to explain to you, but it will be for another lesson. I'm going to open directions in Spanish and uh, I will make use of some uh, words in Quechua. Uh, Quechua is the language of the Quero, which are the descendants of the Inca. Sacred Indian tradition is a tradition followed in the Peruvian Andes and all the Inca nation, and that's why we have the Inca nation flag. <laughs> By this side and uh, let's now all uh, stand up and you can just open your arms and your heart and we're going to start by calling the directions and this will give us um, a guidance and a position uh, all um, in order to to enhance the, the teachings that we're going to be discussing today okay so turn to south Vengan a nosotros, recibanos, bendíganos. Denos la bienvenida, denos poder, fuerza, energía. Cordón real, águila, águila dulce. Danos el regalo de tu visión, entréganos tu curación, ayúdanos a traer curación a todos los ayos. Pruébenos de un buen yankai, buena sabiduría, buen munai, por todos los caminos del mundo. Thank you, right? To the winds of the west, vengan a nosotros, recibanos, bendíganos. Denos la bienvenida, denos poder, fuerza y energía. Gran Amaru, gran serpiente, Sacha Mama. Madre Agua, bendícenos. Ven a nosotros, pruébenos y en buen blanca, en buena sabiduría, buen munay, por todos los caminos del mundo. Thank you, Raj. the 
de nuevo. Vengan a nosotros, recibanos, bendíganos, denos la bienvenida, denos poder, fuerte energía, felino de luz. Ven a nosotros, recibanos, sánanos. Gran Arcuiris, ayúdanos en nuestra jornada por tres pachas, enséñanos, guíanos por el buen camino del Kwasai. Pruébenos y en buen Yanka, en buena sabiduría, en buen Munai, por todos los caminos del mundo. Sociorat. To the winds of the east. Vengan a nosotros, reciban, nos bendigan. Denos la bienvenida, denos poder, fuerza, energía. A todos los maestros y curacaculas, denos poder, fuerza, energía. Háganos poseedores de vuestro gran espíritu. Pica flor divino, recibenos. Ven a nosotros, pruébanos en buen yanca, buena sabiduría, buen munay, por todos los caminos del mundo. On your knees and come to Mother Earth. You can form a triangle and put a triangle on your third eye and with that third eye you come to the ground and you connect to Mother Earth. Pacha mama, pacha mami, recibe, acógenos, bendícenos, denos sus aguas, el sustento de cada día. A todos los apos vengan a nosotros, bendíganos, haz un gati apu, falcantan apu, falcantan apu, falcantan apu, falcantan apu. Walki ilku apu, waskanum apu, misi apu, table mountain apu, mahalitur apu. Then she will put the come up and bring your hands to the skies and to heavens. I can see the sun, 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 I Acompáñenos en nuestra ceremonia, pues que estamos celebrando lo que seremos. As we are celebrating what we are to become. Cross your hands over your heart. Close your eyes. And go within yourself and bring a large, warm sense of gratitude for the spirit within you. And take your time. Thank you. 
Okay, I hope that you are sitting comfortably. That today you don't need to be on your yoga pose and you don't need certainly to be laying down in bed. You can even be doing this, uh, watching it from your desk or from your couch or your phone. Um, it is a more relaxed environment. Uh, it's an environment of sharing and um, and having a sense of are you. Are you is the casual word for community. And runa is the casual word for humankind. And this is what uh, the intention for today's session is about. It's about community and uh, humankind. And about decisions, uh, transitions, creativity, um, human development and self um, improvement um, as well and, and trust uh, while while doing so and um, the element air represents the the breath of love and um, it, it's it's an exchange um, and reflection of, of a flow of energy and uh, air is um, is a, the primary element and, and nutrient and is associated with the fall season in the south hemisphere um, to which we are entering here uh, in, in South Africa. The air signs of the zodiac, uh, they also the possessors, uh, the, the holders of virtue, of the virtue of knowledge. So the Gemini, uh, Libra, uh, Aquarius, as the air symbolizes and is associated with the breath of love and attributed with a cleansing uh, power. It also symbolizes communication, intelligence, perception, learning, thinking, creativity, ideation, harmony, travel and um, in the north hemisphere for example here is associated with the spring season correct and it's um, by that then um, associated with east direction um, at the opposite for example in Peru or in the incarnation where element air takes more of a northern east direction more 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 to north actually than to than to east and and air is also uh, the symbol that can be found when when you look uh, into scriptures or readings or teachings of the element element air can also be found. Hello Diana, hola, hola Diana. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming here. Anna, hey, hey. Uh, you are an air sign, you are Aquarius. Oh, yeah, well, I know. That's why you are so creative and and so focused. I, yeah, you, you, ha you do have a lot of air sign traits uh, in you, um, you do. So it's it's amazing. So it was your birthday not so long ago. Are you from late Jan? Are you from beginning of February? Hello, enemy. Ah, it's so cute. <laughs> and we have to talk about all of those green um, backgrounds as well. <laughs> and Diana is writing something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay part to you as well. So as I was saying, when we look for air and it teachings about the air element, we usually um, see air being represented as a triangle and usually it has like a straight horizontal line right through it. Okay, so air is uh, related to divine and to um, to uh, to to speak and to to give messages 
um, so we, we speak, we turn east, we give messages, and the air transports and transmutes and takes the message. For an example, in relationships, in work, in ideation, if you, for an example, you place a triangle on your third eye and and you also take so you can either receive light from the sun or you can put the triangle as your ideation as your creativity okay and what is the end 20 yeah. second wow 20 second of jen 20 second of jen i think we must do some some reading on that but uh, because you are just writing, uh, you are in the beginnings of your sign. You still have um, some traits of Capricorn, which is very grounded. So you will see that at times you you have you don't quite know if you should be grounded and taking decisions they are assertive or if it is the time to do that that you are passionate about which is your your design which is your creativity which is about being a people's person which is about giving and caring for others i'm sure that you have this thing about um helping others helping others and assisting others and that others are accommodated and taking care of and embracing others and etc but then because you 22nd of, uh, of, of January you are able to do that without really compromising your yourself okay um, let me know if I am like <laughs> close to it <laughs> so <laughs> um, as I was saying the so every time you are looking for learning this this air air um, air element, you will find in, find it in many 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 scriptures from Hinduism to to old um, to to Greek to Egyptian. Air element is often symbolized as a triangle with a line right through it. Yeah, yep, yeah, aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> and create a new way of doing is it yes it's absolutely you see spot on there is no coincidence there's something that the universe had taught me is that there is no such thing as coincidence it is like that and we are as we are so thank you so much so um the i have some notes here because air is a very for me personally, is the hardest element uh, to to work with. So, not because it's it's uh, harder than the other ones, but it's challenging. It's out of my uh, uh, my composition. I am a lot of water and a lot of fire, and here is just here. So sometimes it's not easy for me to put my message across correctly and it's also not easy for me to really stop and understand or stop to listen the messages that are coming. So in that way, air sits in the middle of my two elements and it's harder for me to control and not that we, because we can control the elements, okay, and it's quite quite interesting in turn when you come to shamanism and and you really devote yourself the time to to work with the elements how much a phenomena also takes place because you start managing the currents and the flows of the air and sometimes you just get very excited and you can actually call a little bit of of, of a storm and, and it's real and it happened to me and believe me i'm not speaking nonsense <laughs> so it's also very gratifying because as you learn practices with the element especially with the element air it it takes you it takes you always on a journey 
the journey of uh, visualization of of placing you where you want to be and and um it's it's extraordinary it's an extraordinary hello oh, we have elise elsa elsa watch hello <laughs> hello elsa thank you so much for coming in what so the the air can also be the element uh, of course of the communication that one that brings the messages but also the one that allows us thought and enlightenment in peru um, in the sacred valley of the Inca, there is a door. So I, I believe it's around 3,600, 3,800 meters above um, sea level. And there's a, a, a massive rock door in, in, the, tem in the temple um, that is uh, said that it, it's the portal to the air uh, element. And this is actually a place where, where many initiations, shamanic initiations to this element um, take, take place. And it's extremely overwhelming to hike the, the ruins of Olaitai Tambo. It's, um, it's an experience um, of um, enlightenment and, and of, of grounding and to basics and, and an experience of togetherness with the element air that I absolutely recommend every single person to take. So, as I said in the in the Andean tradition, in the tradition of the Inca, so the incarnation is Peru, Bolivia, Ecuador, uh, Brazil, uh, Brazil, and um, the Andean tradition is. Um, a more of a mountain tradition, more than a plant or Amazonic uh, tradition. Okay, so in the Andean tradition, north is represented as the element air. Um, okay, where where as I said here, for example, the Celts, the Celts, they they say that air is definitely east, um, and all their temples are facing. East uh, when when to to work with this element, and um, as I mentioned, um, one thing that we can be sure is is the sense of direction that many peoples have had across the centuries, and where shamanic teachings have been passed orally, so from word of mouth, where either there was no writing yet or writing was something or learning to read was something just um, accessible to a very very small niche uh, wealthy uh, part of population usually uh, with with um, religious or or aristocratic or um, people so orally was the way of keeping the, the knowledge and the traditions alive and um, and air was the element of uh, thanksgiving to keeping this this knowledge always going and assertiveness because it was the element of the communication so very highly regarded this element and um in the in the um, in the Andes, so this is the Andean cross. It's called the Shakana, and um, so air is represented here in the north, and uh, we have fire, uh, we have fire, earth, we have water, and we have air. So air, it's here on the third step. So on the third step of the Shakana, and the Shakana is a perfect pie, and it's uh, said to be the the direction to to reach uh, God or the Created. And um, as you heard in the directions, non kani kani, you God, called by many names, yet the one that remains nameless. So you can call it Allah, Jehovah, God, uh, Architect. Uh, it's the name that you give. Uh, uh, 
it's um, in the tradition because it's not a religion it's a tradition is not the important what is important is that you acknowledge the presence um, um, that is higher a power that is higher so air element is represented here in the shakana on the third um, um, step uh, here and it's occupied uh, this third step is occupied by the guardian gods of the malkish so the malkish are the trees and the mummies which are the ones that hold a, and i don't know if you have uh, seen the avatar the movie avatar well a lot of the sacred indian tradition is translated in that movie i actually think that it's like a whole initiation on the sacred indian tradition just sitting on your couch and watching that movie, honest. And um, and the wakas are the shrines, and uh, apus are the mountain spirits and the rivers and the hills. So it's a nature-based uh, uh, tradition, and and these are the origins of, of the ayus, as I said, the communities and the runas, the humankind. So. Uh, very, 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 very beautiful and very powerful element, this one. So, air in Quechua, uh, the language of the Keru, Keru is the descendants of the Inca, and they live in the very, very, very high summits and peaks in, in the Andes. And um, and uh, the language, the language is Quechua, and air in Quechua is Waira. Waira and similar Waira, Air, Ar, right? And um, in this, the elementals of these, uh, these element air are the sylphs. And the sylphs and, and their, um, the domain of the sylphs are the skies and the wind and the air. And a uh, good, and uh, now it's a little bit. Uh, late but a good way of practicing to see because you've all seen them all of you see them and then tell me if i'm right or wrong if you semi close your eyes like this by the sunset on when not to direct light and you can see if you like look on like on the top of your nose right and your eyes are semi-closed can't you see like tiny little points like circles of black like little bubbles with a circle like a disc of black and then if you inhale they start coming like on your skin have you seen them? <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. can you tell me? <laughs> have, have you seen? it's China mm. you're saying you're really <laughs> yeah. so you must try to see the seals it's overwhelming and now that relates me to um takes me back to to february in, in 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 the latest workshop where i was um honored to to see the reaction of um of carolina when she saw the cells and she said like i knew it i knew it and i thought that i was crazy after all i'm not crazy they are there and it, that overwhelming sensation really it was the, it, it was just i don't know uh was so 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 special and please try it you're gonna see it so now i'm gonna teach you a little bit about what the sylphs do what is their role so basically their role is to support to purify to cleanse and to keep that balancing, harmonizing, and the direction, the flows of the air, which is so critical to life in, in our planet, in planet Earth. 
And now I'm going to teach you a couple of practices with this element. All right? To begin a practice, it's advisable that you clear your intention, that you use your imagination. You imagine what your intention is. What is your purpose? Okay? Imagine. And after you imagine it, you visualize it. So you start actually seeing it, playing it as it happening before your eyes. And then you focus, you use concentration. So you don't allow any other thoughts than that visual, that image that you have to come to your mind. And then you use sensation. You actually start feeling as you are in that environment, in that play, in that visual, in front of you. And then you put all your will, all your intention, and you stir it in order to make it happen. Okay? Um, how do you spell it? The silks? S Y L P H S Sil or in Portuguese Silfus S uh, S E L F O S Silfus. And I'll, if you want, I'll show you a whole lot more of information on it. Are you seeing it? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> well done! <laughs> well done! Well done! Isn't it great? Huh? It's amazing. I love it. <laughs> I'll send you more information on this. So, okay. Now that you have our intention for our practice that we want to work this element air, okay? Let's now think about our breath. So, when we breathe in, when we inhale, we bring Good energy, refined energy, purified energy, sami. In. Okay? And then we exhale and with that bright, bright, purified energy, we push the heavy energy down. And away. That's ucha. So breathe in. And exhale. So as now we know that we breathe in nice oxygen, purified oxygen, the kids, the kid will call it um, sun, okay? And we know carbon dioxide is heavy energy, okay, they call it ucha. You see how bright they were? Okay. But I had never seen them. For the first time, loved it. Oh, I am so blessed. <laughs> this is amazing. Now I am exhilarated. Thank you. I mean, that is such a responsibility. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now you're going to see them more often. And then as you practice with them, you're going to see how it, it's important for us to, to breathe in and oxygenate and how helpful they are. Okay, so now... We can go on to one, one, our first practice. And our first practice should be like through a window. So if you still have, here is that is night, but if you still have daylight, will you try to look for the window, okay? Try to look for the window or the or natural uh, light, okay? Now you're going to do that exercise until you see the sun. That is the first practice, through the window or not direct light, but with natural light. And you can see them. And then you practice and let them come and drop, drop. They will drop. Usually they start dropping here in your nose and below your eyes and then on your cheeks. If you want, you should like inhale them. Because if you inhale with your nose, okay, it will purify, it will go to your lungs and from your lungs to your bloodstream. 
You can also open your mouth and breathe them in, but they're going to get lost in, in your body. So you will feel, uh, um, it will, it's good, of course, it's all, all is good, but it won't be as effective as if you inhale it and use your lungs to transfer them to your bloodstream. Okay, now the second practice, it can be with a breeze. So there's a difference between breeze and wind. Okay, I'm going to teach you now with the breeze. So with the breeze, which is a, you know, and the leaves and you feel the movement and a little bit of fresh air and etc. Take that time when there is a breeze and try and go and have a walk. Take a walk. Go walk. Literally, physically, go walk. And as you walk, you take a moment and you connect your mind and your thoughts to Tatawai, eh? or Father Air, or Element Air, and have a conversation with it. And, and ask it to purify you, to purify you in your journey, to, to, to clear your mind, uh, for the decisions that you have to take, for the best decisions to take in your mind, for the best steps, for the best actions, okay, to take with a breeze. Take it for you, okay, to as inner, okay. Now, third, third practice, with the wind. Now, with the wind, you speak to the wind. You speak. You don't walk, you stand still, okay? It, and feel the force of the wind. It's not a breeze, it can actually move you, all right? And as you go on this practice and you're more connected to it, it you know, you can actually feel a little bit unbalanced. So the good thing is just try to keep your, your, your body uh, straight, both legs and, and, you know, like your legs with your shoulders, like a little bit open, Always keep your, head, your your legs open because remember the triangle below you to God and the triangle above you to God. So try to keep a straight line, okay? Your legs a little bit open, aligned with your shoulders, okay? And you can even have your, your, your arms with some space, okay? Try not to have your body parts touching. Or like this, or like this, or like that. Like this usually is a little bit, you know, after some time it gets tiring. So this is a like usually comfortable position. And then you close your eyes and you talk, you speak to the wind and you ask for mental strength and clarity. And you ask for assistance to overcome overwhelming challenges. This is usually related to speaking because, you know, when you, there's a saying that then you know in the garganto, I have a, a knot on my throat. It's like you really want to say it, but, you know, politically correct or you don't want to hurt or you're afraid that your words are going to come out the wrong way and etc. So you hold it, you hold it and you become sick because then is that anguish, is that... Mm, that sourness that comes down and poisons you, poisons you. So you take that practice to be able to you ask to say what you have to say in your power, in your ownership, without damaging, without hurting others, but also without hurting yourself. You know, this is so 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 helpful in relationships especially in our household with our family with our, our friends with in, in our work um and it just makes even people like us more because we're not hurting them and they start acknowledging our own power and that we are and the freedom that we have of saying don't hurt me, but I'll also not hurt you. Don't hurt me too, you know? And the courage we need to say that.
That's the practice with the wind. Okay? And then the last one, the last practice is mindful breathing. So mindful breathing is something that you, you do uh, with meditation, for example. Because you close your eyes, you sit comfortably, and you start that exercise of inhale and exhale, inhale and exhale, to balance your masculine and your feminine, to balance your chakras, to balance whatever you need to, to have in one place, right? And to focus, to, to get away from your thoughts and to focus on, 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 to have the concentration for what your intention for your meditation is. Either to receive or to let go, to calm down, to achieve, etc. Your intention. So, mindful breathing is that exercise where every breath that you take it's mindful. It brings us closer to oneness and to being whole. So when you go and you read in with the intention of purifying and you exhale with the intention of release your unorganized heavy energy, you are uplifted. You are whole and you have a sensation of being closer to God. What is actually happening is that you are getting closer to yourself, to this beautiful essence of you, this beautiful God that lives inside of you. Because, you know, God, Creator, etc., this beautiful, amazing force, He lives with you. That's why when we come out on the moment of, of birth and we take our first breath, it's a traumatizing experience, right? But also when we leave this experience, what is the last thing that happens to us? Is right? The exhale. So that is mindful breathing. Mindful breathing is existence, is love. Is your first breath. In and then your first breath out, your exhale. So, <laughs> oh, a purple heart of Ely. Thank you so much, enemy. <laughs> and I hope that to, I know that today you had like a quite of a uh, you know a, a day that air you know speak out and how to receive the views was also also took a little bit of. Uh, the stall in, in your day so it i hope that that this lesson was was also uh, positive uh, to you because at the end everything is very is very easy there is no rocket science you know it's just going back to basics and living with self and and just being um, grateful for what we have and grateful for the community and um, and and um, I'm, I'm especially the the past weeks. I am extremely grateful for 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 community, and I'm also very grateful for my IU that I've been setting up since uh, February and sharing uh, my teachings. So, guys, any questions that you have, guys and girls? Um, any questions uh, that you have? Lloyd, do you have any questions? Not yet. <laughs> no, no, yourself. Do you have no, any no. questions? No, you don't have any no. questions. He doesn't have any questions. <laughs> Sorry, no. <laughs> no, he doesn't have. Um, so, thank you, Anami. Like, really appreciate it. Thank you, Diana. And uh, if ever you would like me to share, more teachings about this element, or if you want to also sink in uh, everything that I said today, you know, sometimes it come up to your mind, like, oh, she mentioned that, what about this or what about that, you know, I'm a distance, at the distance of a message um, at any time, and, um, and I'm very happy to, to share 
all of these uh, with you. And maybe, and me and Diana, maybe you can tell me, um, do you think that uh, uh, this, uh, this session today would be helpful perhaps to put on an ebook? Or I'll leave it up to you. You, you they are on the other side. Uh, do you think that, um, would you find it helpful that these teachings would eventually come up on, on, on an ebook that I could share uh, with you and that you could have, you know, like writing hand, something that you can just fall on to um, any time? Thank you for reminding us. The then, inside of us that we tend to forget on a daily basis. Yeah, it's true. No, it's it's my it's my pleasure, and um, I try to to keep myself on, honest to this to this part that I've that I've taken these decisions that I embarked that this journey that I stepped into nine years uh, ago, and um, there's days and days, but always. If uh, we get reminded of just going back to self, we find all the drive that we need uh, to our days. So, <laughs> yes, I'm ready to do it. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, enjoy. Thank you so much and have Thanks a blessed well. evening. Okay, great. A positive reaction. Yes, well. I'm going to put a note there for my ebook. And a me. And a me, yes. She's going to do the <laughs> <laughs> And okay, okay, Diana, yeah, an ebook on the elements. Great, great, great stuff, you know. And the, I mean, that is just Working like, back. wow. Thank you so much. Namaste. And uh, keep safe. Take care. And let's chat soon. And 11.11, let the journey begin. Thank you so much for allowing us to be part of your journey and for sharing your journey with us as well. Take care. Bye-bye. Much love and light.